الحمد للہ رب العالمین وصلی اللہ وسلم علی نبی محمد وعلا علیہ وصحبہ وسلم اما بعد ایو الاحبہ ایو الاحباب May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us and protect you and preserve us and preserve you and forgive us and forgive you. Ayyul Ahbab, I wanted to speak very briefly about the importance of adhering to the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and avoiding deviance and avoiding bid'ah. And this is not for the sake of gaining a badge of honor and it's not for the sake of any other personal reasons. But Ayyul Ahbab, it's part of the religion of Islam. And it's the preser preservation of the religion of Islam to speak about those things which contradict and those things which deviate from the straight path. Ayyul Ahbab, and if you are a part of some of those jama'at like Jama'at al Ahbash, then I sincerely advise you to make tawbah ila Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And, th and the Prophet alayhi salatu wa salam said a deen and a siha. He said the religion is sincere advice. And he said, they said, liman. Qalu liman. Qal lillahi wa li kitabihi wa li a'immat al-muslimin wa li rasulihi wa li a'immat al-muslimin wa ammatihim. The Prophet, uh, Ruahu Muslim. In the hadith in Sahih Muslim, the Prophet والسلام, was asked, or he said, the religion is sincere advice. The companions, they said, and to who? He said, والسلام, to Allah, and to his book, and to his, mess his, his messengers, and to the general, uh, to the leaders of the Muslims and the general Muslims. So from the Bab of Nasiha, Ayyul Ahbab, I advise myself and you to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I advise our brothers and sisters that call themselves a jama'at that has nothing in accordance with the sunnah of the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Nor does even their name come from anything from Kitabillah wa Sunnah to Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Anytime you have to call yourself a sect that has no asl, no origin from the Quran and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, nor the Salaf of this Ummah, you have to question where your origin comes from. Does your origins come from Kitabillah wa Sunnah to Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Or does your origin come from the Firqa does your origin originate from misguided sects and sectarianism? As the Prophet والسلام, let us know that many of the Ummah would fall into groups and be in the hellfire. The Prophet والسلام, said, If Tarakat al Yahud al Ithi was Firqa, وَإِفْتَرَكَتَ النَّصَارَ عَلَى إِثْنَتَيْنِ وَسَبْعِينَ فِرْقَةِ وَسَتَفْتَرِكُ هَذِهِ أُمَّ عَلَى ثَلَاثَةٍ وَسَبْعِينَ فِرْقَةٍ كُلَّهَا فِي النَّارِ لِلْوَاحِدَةِ كُلَّ مَنْ هِيَ يَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ قَالَ مَنْ كَانَ عَلَى مِثْلِ وَمَا كَانَ عَلَيْهِ وَأَسْحَابِ الْيَوْمِ وَكَمَا قَالَ نَبِيُّ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ The Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam said in this hadith, رُوَاهُ سُنِنَ الْأَرْبَعَ That's collected in the four sunnins. He alayhi salatu wasalam said the Jews would break into 71 sects, the Christians into 72 sects, my ummah into 73 sects, all of them in the fire except one. And then they said, who are they, Ya Rasulullah? He said, those who are upon my sunnah and the sunnah of my companions. Radiyallahu ta'ala'inu majma'een. Ayyul Ahbab, Jamaat al-Ahbash, when we look at their creed, when we look at their aqidah, when we look at their methodology of da'wah, when we look to the shirkiyat and the ta'wil fasid 
the way they look at the nasus of the kitab Allah wa sunnah rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we see that they fit the profile of the firqata dalla, or they fit the profile of uh, a firqa halika, those destroyed sects and those misguided deviant groups. So if you're a part of that group, I, I ad advise you, question your aqidah and look back into the books. Look into the Quran first. Look into the sunnah, the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and look to the madhab of the salaf and see if what Harari was calling to when he, when he thinks that it's permissible to go to the graves of the saints and to supplicate to them or whatever other deviant creeds that these people hold. Is this from the sunnah, the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Do we have something in common with Catholicism who has the sainthood to such a degree that it's of worship? Does Islam have anything in common with that, Ayyul Ahbab? And I'm sure that any right-minded, thinking Muslim would say no. Say no, this is not the religion of Islam. No, this is not that which, I, that which is the Sabil al mu'mineen the path of the believers. This is not what will get you into Jannah. Ayyul Ahbab, when we look at the creed of Jamaat al Ahbash, we'll see that they fall under the ayat where Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala says in Kitab al Kareem in Surah Ali Imran, He said, Subhanahu wa Ta'ala, فَأَمَّا الَّذِينَ فِي قُلُوبِهِمْ زَيْغٌ فَيَعْتَبِيُونَ مَا تَشَابَهَ مِنْهُ وَابْتِغَى الْفِتْنَةِ وَابْتِغَى تَعْوِيلِهِ وَمَا يَعْلَمُ تَعْوِيلُهُ إِلَّا اللَّهِ وَالْرَاسِخُونَ فِي الْعِلْمِ يَقُولُونَ آمِنَّا بِهِ كُلُّ مِنْ عِنْدِ رَبِّنَا وَمَا يَذَكِرُوا إِلَّا أُولَى الْأَلْبَابِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, And as for those whose heart is a sickness, whose heart is deviant, فَأَمَّا الَّذِينَ فِي قُلُوبِهِمْ مَرَضٍ What do they do? يَتَّبِعُونَ مَا تَشَابَهَ مِنْ They follow the ayats and the verses which are uh, open to interpretation, meaning that they're more, they're ambiguous. Instead of the clear legislated rulings that are in the Quran and the Sunnah, the Messenger of Allah, they look for something that that they they can try to uh, distort the meaning easily, and they run with that and form the basis of their aqidah and their creed and minhaj upon that ayul ahbab. That is that's that's uh, what you find as a characteristic of ahl bid'a, a movement in general, and that's why this verse. Uh, as um, as Ibn Abbas anhu stated about this verse, that this, in reference to those people, those people who have zayg in their hearts, those sickness, that this is ahl bid'ah, that they deviated from the Quran and the Sunnah, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and on the, on the day of judgment, their faces will be dark, whereas ahl ahl iman and ahl Sunnah will have light on their faces. Ayyul Ahbab, where do you want to stand? Do you want to follow a particular Imam or a particular leader who's going to lead you to who knows where? Or do you want to follow the Sunnah, the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? I have so many people who declare that I'm a Wahhabi. I love Muhammad ibn al Wahhab, Shaykh Muhammad Allama, Muhammad ibn al Wahhab Rahimahullah Ta'ala. I love him for the sake of Allah. Why? Because he was a great Imam, a great Mujahid who fought and strove and uh, taught and lear learned and taught the Sunnah, the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and left behind for us beneficial books which, which call to Kitabullah with Sunnah to Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That's why we love him. We don't love him for a particular name or a particular uh, ideology, but we love him because his ideology is matches with Kitabullah with Sunnah to Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. His ideology comes from the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. His ideology, what he called to, what he strove in what he taught was kitab illa wa sunnah to rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that's why we love him why do we love shaykh al-islam ibn taymiyyah because he was an alam rabbani because he was shaykh al-islam because he called the kitab illa wa sunnah to rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the madhab of the salaf he revived the madhab of the salaf he preserved the madhab of the salaf this is why we love all of those we love the salaf of this ummah all the way up to the ulama of today who called the kitab illa wa sunnah to rasul but we don't blindly follow any of them. Because as Imam Malik said, that kullu, which means every, every person, 
can uh, his his statements can be taken or rejected, except the inhabitant of that grave. And he pointed to the grave of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, meaning that we don't blind follow anyone, even the Sahaba to Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam radiyallahu taalaanu majmain. We don't follow them in every single mas'ala and fiqh, but their aqidah was all the aqidah of Ahlul Sunnati wal Jama'ah. And their fiqh was the fiqh of Ahlul Sunnati wal Jama'ah. However, that doesn't mean every Messiah that there was no ijtihad and that there was no never a mistake in an issue of fiqh or that one one goal, one statement wasn't stronger than another. So Ayul Ahbab, it's imperative that we stick to Kitabi Law wa Sunnat al Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And if you're gonna choose anyone as your Imam, anyone as your Shaykh that you blind follow, it's Muhammad ibn Abdullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It isn't Abdullah Harari. It isn't uh, Sheikh Naqshbandi Tariqa, or Sheikh uh, uh, Diobandi Tariqa, or Muhammad Ilyas of Jamaat Tablik, or Sayyid Qutb of Akhwan Muslimin, or Hassan Obinna of Akhwan Muslimin, or whoever. None of those people can really truly benefit us, and we only take from them in accordance with what they they adhere to from the Sunnah, the Message of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That which goes against it, we throw it away, and this was in accordance with the statement of Imam Abu Hanifa. This was in accordance with the statement of Imam Shafi'i. This was in accordance with the statement of Imam Malik. And this was in the accord this was in accordance with the statements of Imam Ahmed about if you find something which contradicts my madhab, then or a statement that I have, then throw it against the wall if it contradicts the Sunnah of the Message of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And one of the statements which is mashhur on one of the uh, uh, I believe it was Imam Malik Rahimahullah Ta'ala, and I'm not sure Imam Malik or Imam Shafi, he said, Either Saha Hadith, Fuhu Madhabi, that if a Hadith is proven to be authentic, then that's my Madhab. This is how we should be, Ayyul Ahbab. So don't be offended, followers of Jamaat al Ahbash, but instead make Toba to Allah and research. If you believe that what I'm saying is incorrect, I challenge you, go back to the Quran and go back to the Sunnah and those practices that, that, that you see from your Jamaat. Put that on the scale. If you see that you have evidence from the Quran and the Sunnah, the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the Salaf of this Ummah, uh, uh, an abundance of Sahih, authentic evidence that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam sought blessings from the graves, sought blessings from the other Prophets, Alayhim Afdal Salatu Wasallam, then that would be a hujjah for you. But if you find from the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that he didn't go to the graves of others and supplicate to the graves, then you're going to find that there's a hujjah against. You're going to say, where did Abdullah Harari come up with these fatawa? Where did Abdullah Harari come up with this fatawa? Where did Abdullah Harari come up with this uh, aspect of creed? Why does he not affirm the divine attributes and sifat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Why did they distort it to fit their intellect instead of going with what it means on its apparent meaning in accordance with Kitab Allah wa Sunnah Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the minhaj of the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhu majma'een this is what they left for us and that's the Sabila Mu'mineen and we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam